Good evening, folks, and a hearty welcome to our drive-in theater. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. Did you fail to dress up for tonight's show? No tie, an old shirt and slacks, a house dress? Well, don't give it a thought. We're glad you came as you are. We just want you to enjoy yourselves. Don't forget to visit our refreshment center during the intermission or any time. You love the tasty array of snacks we have to offer. So will the youngsters. Everything is quality and mm, so good. We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. There are always wonderful new pictures to see, delightful snacks to nibble, a gay, pleasant evening for all. Oh, a word of caution. Don't drive over 10 miles an hour in the theater area for your safety's sake. And mom or pop, go with the kids when they leave the car. We hope you have a wonderful time. Come back soon. The artist, the poet, the figure model who loves to show it. Suppose he could be physically attracted to her? No, man, he ain't the type. He don't get enough vitamin E. All these are beat. All these you'll meet in a bucket of blood. Let us make the scene. Crazy. Come, enjoy yourself. <laughs> Where the hilarious enjoy the horrifying. In a bucket of blood. No, you're gonna shoot me! Don't shoot! Come to the land of living dreams, where realists dream of the unreal. Walter, you've done something to me. Something deep down inside of my prana. Oh, Walter, I want to be with you. You're creative. Beatniks at their bawdiest. The creative urge at its most primitive. I'm deeply moved. And I shall compose a poem. Love is art. Art is love. It's the weirdest and the wildest. I don't want to make statues anymore. I, I want to get married to you. form of royal jelly could be obtained. From the queen wasp, for example. Socially, the queen wasp is on level with a black widow spider. Oh, no, 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 no. There might be danger. Those are my terms, Mr. Fincher. Janice Starling will be the next guinea. A woman of fantastic desires. Sponsoring a scientist with fantastic theories. And demanding... Fantastic results. How old do I look? Tell me! How old? Twenty-three. The enzymes. The enzymes, they're, they're going crazy. Miss Darling will kill her and tear her body to shreds.
обещал всех знать.
And now, on with the show. I will talk to you of art, for there is nothing else to talk about. For there is nothing else. Life is an obscure hobo bumming a ride on the omnibus of art. Burn gas buggies and whip your sour cream of circumstance and hope. And go ahead and sleep your bloody heads off. Creation is. All else is not. What is not creation is Graham Crackers. Let it all crumble to feed the creator. The artist is. All others are not. A canvas is a canvas. Or a painting. A rock is a rock. Or a statue. A sound is a sound. Or is music. A creature is a creature. Where are John, Joe, Jake, Jim, Jerk? Dead, dead, dead. They were not born before they were born. They were not born. Where are Leonardo, Rembrandt, Ludwig? Alive, alive, alive. They were born. Bring on the multitude with a multitude of fishes. Feed them to the fishes for liver oil. To nourish the artist. Stretch their skins upon an easel to give him canvas. Crush their bones into a paste that he might mold them. Let them die. By their miserable deaths become the clay within his hands, that he might form an ashtray or an ark. For all that is comes through the eye of the artist. The rest are blind fish swimming in the cave of aloneness. Swim on, you maudlin, muddling, maddened fools. One bright and sunny night, some artist will bait a hook and let you bite upon it. Bite hard and die. In his stomach, you are very close to immortality. I was looking at Carla's picture. Why, I pay you to look at pictures? Come on, get to work. I was just looking. There are empty cups all over the place. Clear them out. You shouldn't be so rough on him, Lenny. Hey, say, Walter. Hi. Oh, good. Yes, man, how you make it? Fine, man, how about you? In and out. Valdez, Vice. Yeah, LaCroix checking in. Lou took over a couple of minutes ago. Anything new at the door? Well, nothing you can pound nails in. A couple of hustlers. One of them short, fat, brunette, named Skinny. And the other one was short also. She was bleached and skinny. Name of fat? Probably. I didn't get it. They didn't give any pictures, though. I guess you can keep an eye on them. Okay. Any heads? Well, Jerry Sachs looked like he was straight. I'm sure he's on it anyway. Didn't see any pushes around the place. Lou said he'd check out on Jerry. He'll sound him out later if he gets any higher. I guess that's about it. Okay, uh, go on home and get a good night's sleep, you think? Okay, so long. 
Everyone listened to my new poem, but do you think they really heard it? I heard it, Mr. Brock. Thank you, Walter. I'm sure you did. Bring on the multitude with a multitude of fishes. Feed them to the fishes for liver oil to nourish the artist. <laughs> that was word for word. Yes, it? I've forgotten. You mean you don't remember your own poem? I refuse to say anything twice. Repetition is death. I don't get it. When you repeat something, you are reliving a moment, wasting it, severing it from the other end of your life. I believe only in new impressions, new stimuli, new life. I thought you believed that life is an obscure hobo bumming a ride on a... I do believe that, Walter, but I also believe creative living. To be uncreative, you might as well be in your grave or in the army. They tried to draft me once. I couldn't pass the test. <laughs> Walter, Leonard's looking at you. He's just about gone. Walter has a clear mind. One day something will enter it, feel lonely, and leave again. Yeah. <laughs> Too much. Yes, cats, yes. If you want to know how beatniks live, William and me will show you. We'll introduce you to some wild ones. <laughs> you may even discover an artist of your own. And how much is that going to cost us? What cost? A couple of bucks. You want to meet some beatniks, don't you? Oh, no, it's the artist. I'm just crazy about artists. All that is comes through the eye of the artist. The rest are just blind fish swimming in a cave of aloneness. Oh. You must be an artist, and working as a busboy, too. Feed him that he will be satisfied. The artist is, all others are not. That's most intriguing. Are you a painter? Well, well no, I, I work, uh, I'm working on something that's not ready yet. What is it, man, finger painting? Uh, draw me a picture of a house, Walter. Make some smoke coming out of the chimney. Well, I am working on something, I'll show you soon. Walter. Uh, is he? Uh... Kid, come on You look awful pale. What'd you have to eat tonight? I had a salami sandwich, Mrs. Swicker. Oh, if you were my son, why don't you let me fix you a nice bowl of soup? Won't take but a minute. Oh, it's okay. I, I can fix myself something. Besides, I got something important to do. Oh, oh, say, Walter, did you see anything of Frankie tonight when you went out? I didn't see him at all. But, well, if you do, tell him I got a nice, fresh piece of halibut for him. Tell him that? I mean, do you think he'll understand? He's only a cat. Oh, good night, Walter.
Frankie? Canvas is a canvas or a painting. A rock is a rock or a statue. A sound is a sound or it's music. What's the matter, Frankie? How'd you get yourself stuck in a wall? Wait a minute, I'll get you out. Mrs. Swicket. She had a nice fresh piece of halibut for you. I'll give you to her in the morning. Repetition is death, Frankie. he might form an ashtray or an ark. Pray that you might be his diadem, gold, glory, paint, clay, that he might take you in his magic hands and wring from your marrow wonders. Where are John, Joe, Jim, Jerk? Dead, dead, dead. Hi, Carla. Walter, what are you doing here so early? Uh, well, I brought something. I think you'll like it. Take that stuff to the laundry mat, Walter. Huh? Don't mind him. What have you got? It's a thing I made. Look at this, Lenny. 
Well, where'd you get that, auction? I made it. You made that? I said I did, didn't I? Walter, it's very good. Honest? Honest. What's it called? Dead Cat? Dead Cat? That's its name? Sure. Well, it sure looks dead enough. You, you want to buy it? Buy it? That thing? Scare people out of the place. Don't be silly. It's tremendous. Look at the detail. The anatomy is perfect. Look at the expression on its face. How come you put a knife into it? I didn't mean to. Just got carried away, huh? Well, all right. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put it in the corner of the alcove. If it sells, we'll split 50-50, okay? Sure. Does this mean I'm an artist? Maybe so. You can do other things as well. well all that is comes through the eye of the artist. Yeah, you're a real artist now. I go in back and scrub down those garbage cans. Much now. You really like it? We like it. Now go on. See my cat? What's the matter? You losing? How do you like my cat? You make this thing mad? Uh huh. It's crazy. Crazy. You wanna buy it? For me, man. I'm tapped. Likes my cat. Get to work. Hey, hey, Waller, come here a minute. Hey, congratulations, man. Walter, you're famous. I saw your cat. Did you like it, Mr. Brock? You may call me Maxwell. God, how'd you do it, Walter? All right. Just took some clay and fixed it up. <laughs> Attention. Attention, everyone. As you pass through these yellow portals, I am sure you noticed on your right a small clay figure and assumed this transfixed effigy to be the work of a master sculptor. And indeed, so it is. That master sculptor is in our midst. He is none other than Walter Paisley, our very own busboy whose hands of genius have been carrying away the empty cups of your frustrations. Mark well this lad. His is the silent voice of creation. Within the dark, rich soil of humility, he blossoms as the hope of our nearly sterile century. Uh, beautiful. beautiful, Maxwell. Bring me an espresso, Walter. Hey, Maxwell, really beautiful. Thank you. Man, you are in. Oh, Walter, it yes, was wonderful. Yes, yes, the cat's cut. cut. Yes. This is my man. Took of everything. Yes, yes. Listen, man, you got a pen? Huh? This is my man. Hey, Pops, what's happening? Making a big scene for Walter. Who'd he shoot? He made a cat. Out of clay. See you around. Yeah, later. Somebody clear this table, please. This is my man. Will somebody clear this table? That's cat. Did you hear them, Mr. DeSantis? They all like my cat. Yeah, very good. Now look, Walter, you must be tired. Why don't you take the rest of the night off? Huh? No, I don't no, 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 no. You got it coming. Besides, you're creating an incident. When people are applauding, they don't order coffee. So go on home and work on something. Make another cat. Well, I haven't got another cat. Well, just go to the movies. Please, Walter, go. All right, Mr. DeSantis. Good night. Good night, Walter. Walter? Walter, wait a minute. Oh, hello, Naolia. Walter, I dug it. My cat? It was the most wonderful, wildest, like, wiggiest thing I've ever seen. Walter, you've done something to me. Something deep down inside of my prana. I have? Oh, Walter, I want to be with you. 
You're creative. You've got a hot light bulb glowing inside of you, and I want to be warmed by it. Gee, that's nice of you, Naolia. Walter, take me away from here. Take me away to some cool blue place and gas me. I can't. I gotta go home. Oh, then I'll go home with you. Oh, no, Mrs. Swicked wouldn't like that. She's my landlady. Isn't there anything I can do for you? I don't think so, Naolia. Oh, Walter, I can't let you just split like this. I've got to do something. I've got to contribute. You don't have to do anything. Wait. Wait, there is one thing I can do. One little thing. Don't leave, Walter. I want to give you something. Something that'll make you remember me. Put it in your pocket. Now go, Walter. Don't look back. Just go. Have your autograph, Mr. Paisley? Why, certainly, my good woman. Everybody likes my cat. You want to buy my statue, mister? Ten thousand dollars? Okay. Gee, I'll be famous. And then I can ask Carla and she'll say yes. I know she will. Yo, Lou, ain't you? I seen you down the yellow door plenty. Come on in. I, I was just making some pancakes. You can have some if you like. Did you see my cat? Yeah, I saw your cat. I also saw that chick lay these on you. Oh, that was Naolia. She's a nice girl. She's kind of strange, though. I guess she figures I get headaches or something. Okay, Walter, who's your connection? Connection? Yeah, connection. Who do you score from? Where do you buy your horse? Horse? Horse, junk, white stuff, heroin. Is that what that is? I never seen any of that before. I always thought that was expensive. Yeah, Walter, well, that can be real expensive. Gee. Well, wasn't that nice in Naolia to give me that expensive horse? Walter. Huh? Police officer. Ooh. You're like an undercover man. You're under arrest, Walter. Under arrest for what? Possession of narcotics. Who, me? What are you talking about? Walter, I got you cold. Now you just come along quietly. I didn't do nothing. And they only had give me those. I didn't ask her for it. Oh, I didn't even know what was right. in there. All right, you can tell them that downtown. Now, let's go. I ain't going no place with you. Walter, do I have to point this at you? You're going to shoot me. No, don't shoot Walter, me. Walter, just relax. No, you're going to shoot now, me. Just relax. No, don't shoot just me. Just shut up, Walter. No, you're going to shoot me. Don't shoot me. <laughs> Are you all right? I thought I heard you shouting a minute ago. Walter! What's all the noise in here? Noise, Mrs. Swicket? What noise? Don't tell me I didn't hear a racket. Are you sure you're all alone? I'm always alone, Mrs. Swicket. Yeah. Walter, have you been talking to yourself again? Well, I, I guess maybe I have, Mrs. Swicket. 
Somebody's got to. Walter, you know, what you need is a girl. But she doesn't have to be pretty. Just so long as she takes good care of you. Well, I can take real good care of myself, Mrs. Swicket. Yeah, I can see that. Look at this pad. It's terrible. When did you ever clean it up? And when did you change these sheets last? They look like they're alive. Uh, Mrs. And, Swicket, uh, I gotta meet some friends in a little while, well, and I gotta take a shower. Well, well, no, why so, don't you clean up this stuff? Oh, please, What's Mrs. Swicket. But if you'd have shot me, you'd be mopping up my blood now. I can't help it if I got scared and hit you. I didn't mean it. It's crazy. It's crazy. I didn't know you had it in you, Walter. How'd you do it? Well, I just took some clay and fixed it up. Go home and make something, Walter. Make another cat. But I haven't got another cat. Well, I reported in here around midnight. Lou had already been gone over an hour. No, nobody seems to know where he went. Why don't you put an alert out on him and I'll check on him from here. Okay, right. He's a criminal type. Ain't you, Walter? I'm sorry, Mr. DeSantis. Oh, that's all right, Walter. Sit down. Mm -hmm. Sit down. <laughs> Greetings, man. I'm not supposed to sit with the customers. We? Now, why shouldn't you sit at the table, Walter? After all, you're a big artist now. A true creator above mere mortals. That's the big idea. Idea? I was just telling Walter the truth. Man wanted to pay me $100 for the cat. In fact, he's taking it home to show it to his wife. Proves that I underestimated Walter's ability. His work has enormous realism. You can hardly tell it from the real thing. Boy, that sounds like a real put down. Get off Walter's back, Leonard. Am I on his back? You're not very funny. I'm not trying to be. 
Walter, what are you going to make next? A dog, maybe. Or a bird. How about a few dozen cockroaches from your room? Hey, man, why don't you make an elephant? I, I got a new one. Great. What is it? It's a full-length, life-size figure. Crazy. What is it called? Uh, murdered man. When do we get to see it? Oh, anytime. Hey, that's a pretty far-out name for a statue. I saw a statue once. It was called the third time Phyllis saw me, she exploded. Well, what kind of a statue was that? I don't know. It was made out of driftwood and dipped in fluoric acid. Very wild. <coughs> What's wrong, Leonard? Nothing. Nothing at all. It's the food in this dump. Oh, man, you should try the sorrel sewer. They got wheat germ bagels. Too much. Excuse me, please. I think he really is sick. So who isn't? Santos! Well, I've been trying to get to you all evening. You gotta make a call. Gotta call Lieutenant Valdez. Listen, I was wrong about my wife. She wants that cat after all. Do you hear me? I'll give you that hundred dollars for the cat. I can't talk to you just now. All right, then two hundred. No. No! Three hundred dollars and that's tops. Three hundred dollars for the cat? <laughs> I know I'm going out of my mind, but I've been collecting art pieces all over Europe for years. And this boy, Walter Paisley, has got it. I want to buy his first work. And to make very sure that I get it, I'll pay you five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars for the cat and the first look at his next stuff. Someone has the cat just now, but I'll have him back in a few days. And you can have it for the $500. Oh, thank you, sir. I think I've made a bargain. Call me when you're ready. Good night. Larry! You feel better? Listen, I'm going over to Walter's later after the place closes to see Murdered Man. You feel up to coming along? The rope was fixed around his neck And a washer behind his ear And the prison bell was tolling But Tim Evans didn't hear Saying, go down, you murderer, go down Look at the size of it! Well, it's, it's not really that big. I got it on kind of a stand. Let's see it. I'm a little nervous. I, I never did a person before. You can do anything if you set your mind to it. It's hot in here. You want me to open a window? Oh, come on, Walter. Take off the sheet. Don't you like it? Walter, it's a masterpiece. I've never seen anything like it before. And I hope I never see anything like it again. <laughs> Neither do I. It's hideous, and it's eloquent. It expresses modern man and all his self-pity. How did you ever find that in yourself, Walter? Well, it, it wasn't easy. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Nothing at all. I've never seen anyone so squeamish. What's your opinion, Leonard? Don't ask me. Oh, come on. Now, even you must see its value. Do you think that you or I could have conceived of such a thing, much less executed it? Well, then admit it. It's a work of genius. I admit it. Then, then let's take it down to the yellow door. No. Why not? I'll tell you. But you... You cover it up again, please, huh? Please! Thank you. What is all this nonsense? Why do you want to hide it? Well... I've been thinking. I, I didn't realize how much talent Walter actually had. It would be wrong to show his pieces one at a time. Dead wrong. You're right. He should build a collection first. Yes. That's the idea. 
Maybe when it's big enough, we can have a show. A show? Yeah. Uh, just for me? No! Well, not exactly. I mean, you, you take years and years. It's getting hot again. Well, it would take you years to make that many statues, but your work would be featured. It's a wonderful idea, Walter. It's the only way to gain recognition. All the big art critics and art dealers will be there. It'll be an event. Yes, then we can unload. We can sell this stuff for a lot more. But uh, the show, uh, how soon can we go? Well, don't rush things. It takes time. But first of all, you've got to stop making these horrible statues. Carla and I will guide you. Maybe you can turn to freeform. Freeform? Well, that's the movement today. With his talent for realism? But you can see the direction his realism takes. It's unhealthy. But, but you said I was a genius. I don't want to be a busboy anymore. Yes. Maybe you got a point there. You shouldn't keep working at the yellow door. Look, I'm sure that man is going to buy your dead cat. So here, here's your fee in advance. Fifty dollars. And if you need more, I've got it, so don't worry. I've got great faith in you, Walter. <laughs> Gee, fifty dollars for something I made. Now you're a professional. Let's go. Okay. Good night, Walter. Keep up the good work. Yeah, but don't rush things. You got all the time in the world. Come on, Carla. Good night. Oh, sure you are, Walter. I am. Look. Good heavens. Я цыган с инвалид болит. Помню я безумные ночи. Песни, пляски, дивный звон гитар. И любви пленительный угар. One of the greatest advances in modern poetry is the elimination of cleric. I am proud to say my poetry is only understood by that minority which is aware. Aware of what? Why not of anything stupid, just aware? Man, this place is beginning to feel like a lineup. Yeah, baby. If it don't cool out pretty soon, I'm gonna haunt somebody else's joint. We may have to start drinking. Отвучали песенки цыган, давно закрыт любимый ресторан. Yes, man, yeah, yeah, that's my man, yeah. Yes, man, yes. Good evening, Walter. Good evening, Paula. Sylvia, didn't you see me wave my Zen stick? It's Walter Paisley. Bring me a cappuccino and a piece of papaya cheesecake and, and a bottle of Yugoslavian white wine. Yes, sir, Mr. Paisley. Good evening, Walter. Maxwell, how have you been? I see the rewards of achievement have come your way. Well, after all, I'm a successful sculptor now. Indeed. Hey, man, dig Walter the Wigger. It's coming out like he just cured cancer. Let us make the scene. Crazy. I was just suggesting to Walter that he try his hand at freeform. Why do you suggest anything to Walter? Are you the spokesman for society come to put your stifling finger in his eye? Good evening, gentlemen. Oh, now, who invited these two down from the clouds? Maxwell, you who? Through the table, bring a bowl. I may be sick. It's Alice the Awful. Comes to spread cheer and the color. Look at my suntan, everybody. Do we have to? Where have you been, Alice? I went up to Big Sur to look for Henry Miller. You didn't find him, I hope. No, he's in Europe. Good. Why is the busboy sitting here? I'm not the busboy anymore. That's right. Walter has become a sculptor. Oh, really? I'm a model, you know. I only charge $25 an hour. Would you like to do me? I just might. Never mind that. Walter's gonna try freeform. There you go again. I may take my business to the Sorrel Sewer. As a matter of fact, I was going to suggest to Walter that he try a female figure. As a change from the violent death theme. You really should, Walter. You know what? If you like, I'll be your model for free. I couldn't. Not you. Man, if you're going to be an artist, you've got to do nudes. Nudes. Right, right, right. Ain't nobody an artist unless he does 
news. Will you get them out of here before we wind up in night court? Oh, let's change the subject. I'm sick of hearing about sculpture. Nobody knows how to do that anymore, much less the busboy from the yellow door. Well, who do you think you're talking about? Don't shout at me. I don't like you. <laughs> Nobody asked for your opinion, Walter. You're just a simple little farm boy, and the rest of us are all sophisticated beatniks. That's all, man. Let's split. Yeah, man. I gotta make me some air. See, you, you made them leave. What did I do? The first beneficial service of your benighted life. It proves we're all good for something. Are you saying that this busboy is better than I? Yes. I think this whole bit about him being a sculptor is just a big put on for my benefit. That's not true. I am a sculptor. Oh, yeah? Prove it. Make something out of this. There. Hand. <laughs> that isn't a real hand. If you were a sculptor, you'd create something for me. A harpoon would be very nice. I'm going home. Alice? You're obnoxious. But he's such an idiot. I wanted to apologize for being nasty to you this evening. So you're apologized. Good night. Listen, Torf, why don't you get out of here and let me go to bed? I didn't finish talking to you. I decided to make that female figure after all. Oh? And I'd like you to pose for it. Remember what I said about my price? $25 an hour. If you want to pay it, I don't mind posing. When do you want to start work? Tonight. You mean right now? Uh-huh. Wait till I get my sweater. More heat around this place. It's bad for the clay. You'll get used to it. Well, I'm almost ready. Here. Sit in this chair and I'll pose you. How's this pose? Well, that's fine. It's very good. Just stay like that. That doesn't look like very much clay. Oh, it's enough. Put this around your neck. Hot. Are these fertile eggs? Are these eggs fertile? Naturally. What'd you fry them in? Uh, we ran out of the safflower seed oil, but I found a bottle of peanut oil on the shelf. Don't worry, it's not hydrogenated. Is that the cold pressed stuff or the junk Hilda bought by mistake? <laughs> yes, man, yes. Hi. Good morning, Walter. Hi, Walter. What brings you here? 
Have some breakfast, man. What are you having? And soy and wheat germ pancakes, organic guava nectar, calcium lactate and tomato juice, and garbanzo omelets sprinkled with smoked yeast. Join us? No, thanks. Mm. Sounds great, though. Mm. Uh, I brought something to show you. Could I have some of the guys help me? Is it murdered, sure. man? It's better. Come on. Porters. Put it in the middle of the room. When did you do this, Walter? Last night. It doesn't take me very long. I should say not. Well, let's see it, man. I can't believe it. I'm honored to know this man. Do you think it's nice? Hey, she's beautiful. Do you think it's nice in a murdered man? Oh, I don't know, Walter. It's impossible to choose. They're both great. Walter, I'm deeply moved. To show my appreciation, I'm going to give a party tonight at the Yellow Door. In your honor. And I shall compose a poem. More champagne, Your Majesty? Yeah, yeah. Where, where? There, there. That's fine. Man, let's have another little kiss. Walter, you're a wretch. Yeah. <laughs> Flies now pays later through the nose of amidextrous apathy. Necrophiles may dance upon the placemats in an orgy of togetherness. The highway of life cuts sharply through the shady ghettos and the ivy-covered tombs, and laughter rings from every time capsule in the star-spangled firmament. And in the deep freeze, it is the children's hour, and no one knows that Duncan is murdered, and no one knows that Walter Paisley is born. Duncan knows, Tuesday Sunrise knows, alley cats and garbage cans and steaming pavements and you and I and the nude descending the staircase and all such things with souls we know that Walter Paisley is born. Ring rubber bells, beat cotton gongs, strike silken cymbals, play leathern flutes, the cats and cans, and you and I, and all such things with souls. We shall hear, Walter Paisley is born, and the souls become flesh. Walter Paisley is born. Marvelous, darling, marvelous. Man, like that was the greatest gas I ever heard. Crazy, what did he say? Didn't you hear him? No, man, I'm too far out. <laughs> Maxwell, that was magnificent. I feel so elegant. Walter deserved every word of it. it makes me so glad I'm aware. <laughs> did you hear what he said? Yes, Walter. All about me. It's true, isn't it? Every word. You better hold off on the bubbly, artist. Yeah, why? You might talk too much. <laughs> what would I say? Most anything I expect. Are you two trying to ignore the rest of us? Oh, not me, Maxwell. I wouldn't ignore you. I know what it is to be ignored. Tell us what you're going to do next, Walter. I'm going to make the most wonderful, wildest, wickiest things you've ever seen. I'm going to make big statues and little statues, tall statues and short statues. I'm going to make statues of nobodies and statues of famous people, statues of actors and, and poets and people who sell things on television and a statue of the mayor, and some opera singers and their intimate friends. And everybody will say, Walter, let me shake your hand. 
It's been a real pleasure to have known you. <laughs> Alley cats and garbage cans, they know that Walter Paisley is born. Ring rubber bells, beat cotton gowns, strike silken cymbals, play leather flutes. <laughs> Tell us what you're gonna do next, Walter. I'm gonna make big statues, little statues, movie stars and poets, and guys who sell things on television. And, and the mayor and some opera singers. What you're gonna do next, Walter? What am I gonna do next? What am I gonna do next? I gotta do something before they forget. I know what it's like to be ignored. an obscure hobo bumming a ride on the omnibus of art. Huh? What'd you say? What well, is not creation is graham crackers. Let them all crumble to feed the creator. Now, beat it. You must be nuts. You got in the box. Uh, just wait till you see this. Extra, extra. Horrible murder in furniture factory. Read about the man who got cut in half. Extra, extra. Police can only find part of it. Leonard. What's the matter, Leonard? You made a bust. Yeah, isn't it wonderful? What's the matter, Leonard? Put it down, Walter, please. Walter. Walter, listen to me carefully. I don't want you to make any more statues. Do you understand? No more statues. Well, why not? I, I gotta make statues, Leonard. You heard Brock. They want me to make them. If I stop making them, I'll, I'll just be a busboy again. Brock, he's behind all of this with this stupid, bitter poetry. Listen, you've got to stop and right away. I'm beginning to feel responsible. Why? What did you do? Never mind. Walter, I've decided to have that show for you right away. Yes. When Carla comes, we'll have her work up some nice invitations. We'll have them printed up. We'll invite the critics and the art collectors. We'll tell them. Well, I don't see why we can't go. Mr. Leonard DeSantis is afraid to have you come. You who buy his coffee that lure his tourists. You are the heart and soul and meat of the yellow door. He slighted you. Did you get an invitation? I did not, but I'm going anyway. Not to drink his champagne, but to see Walter's triumph. After that, we go no more. Hi, Maxwell. I won't say good luck, Walter. Why not? It would imply you could not succeed on your ability alone. You look so handsome. I do. So do you. <laughs> I mean, you look so pretty. Oh, thank you. Are you ready? Oh, we've got plenty of time. I know, but I, I wanted to talk to you. OK. We can go now if you like. Bye. Later, man, later. Swing. Man, why do you suppose Walter wants to get her alone? You suppose he could be physically attracted to her? No, man, he ain't the type. He don't get enough vitamin E. Maxwell gave him a bottle of wheat germ oil once. Maybe he just started taking it. What did you want to talk to me about, Walter? Well, 
What kind of people do you like, Carla? Oh, thinking people. Artistic people, I guess. You think I'm artistic? Of course I do. That means you like me. I like you very much, Walter. I, I, I thought you did on account of how you kissed me the other night. Oh, that was for your sculptor of the girl. You're nude in the chair. Carla, uh, uh, I, I've been alone for a long time, and, and I know you've been alone, because you never seem to go out with anybody, even though Leonard's always asking you to go out with him, and I uh, just... What are you trying to say? Carla, I, I, I don't want to make statues anymore. I, I want to get married to you. How long have you been thinking about this, Walter? Oh, for, for a long time. Ever since you first came to work at the club. You were the only one who was ever nice to me. I didn't know you loved me until you kissed me. Walter, I do like you. And I did kiss you. But that was because of your work. There's more to being in love with someone than just that. You mean you don't love me? I'm afraid that's what I mean. But... But you gotta love me. Why do you think I made that statue of Alice? Walter, I'm sorry, but You I... just can't be sorry. I want to marry you. Now calm down, Walter, and let's go in there and... and then maybe when the show's over we can talk about it. Well, tomorrow. I don't want to talk about it. I get it. I see the whole thing now. Nobody knows that Walter Paisley is born. Carla. Will you do one favor for me? Just about anything, Walter. Would you let me make a statue of you? Would you really like to? That'd make me very happy. Okay. Tonight. I'll make a statue of you tonight, okay? Come on. about a return to realism. Yes, a one-man return. We have many artists about, but no craftsmen. This man knows his anatomy. I'd give 1500 for this. After you read my review, it'll probably cost you 5000 <laughs> So what's the trouble? Why should you be so depressed? Have you heard the things they're saying? You can make 25000 on these pieces alone. I thought you put money down. I do, but 25,000? Leave me alone. Out! Man, we have come to make this scene. Want some cappuccino, man. We got the bread. We're not open for business. This is an art exhibit. No bumps. Get out. Uh, that art is a bum, man. And he's sober. Yeah, well, that's his problem. All right, man, all right, we'll wait outside. Yeah, you wait outside. What's the matter? Walter, 
there's a body inside that statue. Well, well that's Alice. It's all right, Carla. Maxwell says it's all right. Let them become clay in his hands that he might mold them. Walter, you stay away from me. Don't you see, Carla? I made them immortal. Don't you see? I can do the same for you. I'm going with you. Hey, man, what is the score? Walter Paisley's a murderer. Ah, man, I saw him chasing Carla down the street.
Lizzie's room, he, he's gone crazy. Paisley! Paisley, open up! Paisley! I suppose he would have called it Hanging Man. His greatest work. ice-cold Coca-Cola with a bright, right taste and a special sparkle all its own. Enjoy a Coke at our snack stand right now. The show starts in nine minutes. Show starts in eight minutes. Fresh candies, the flavors you love. Assorted drinks, your favorite beverages. Hot coffee. Hot dogs, the way you like them. Ice cream, smoothly delicious. The show will start in seven minutes. Here's a choice of food and drink to satisfy anyone and everyone. You'll find something to please you to add to your evening's enjoyment. Something to please all tastes and age groups. Show starts in six minutes.
starts in five minutes. Show starts in four minutes. starts in three minutes. starts in two minutes. The show starts in one minute.
And now, on with the show. Bumpy is not going to hurt you one bit. Just relax and sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep. And in the morning, you'll find yourselves in your new home. Ain't eh, my pitch? <laughs>
Good morning, Doc. What you got there? Ivan, I found some new friends. Listen. Wasp, you better be careful. They can sting a man to death. Don't worry. We understand each other. They know who their friend is. They can tell. Yeah, but they know when you ain't, too. Uh, nonsense. If you knew about wasps what I know, you'd have no fear of them, my boy. No fear. <laughs> see you out here in the field, sir. Oh, how are things running at the front office? Smooth as honey, Renfro. <laughs> I see here you turned in over a thousand pounds of orange blossom honey and 400 of beeswax last month, Renfro. Congratulations. You've made the top of the list again. Thank you, sir. Holiday honey needs your kind of man, Renfro. You stay with it. and I can see a bright future for you with the company. Well, I do try to do my best, Mr. Barker. I try to take my inspiration from the bees. Always busy, busy, busy. Yes. Uh, what about this fellow, Dr. Zinthrop? Zinthrop? <laughs> Boy, that's a nut. Him and his bees. You know, it wouldn't surprise me someday to see him flapping his arms, taking off after some queen bee with the rest of the drones. Mm hmm Well, he's paid to do research on royal jelly. Haven't had a progress report from him in a month. Well, he has a little workshop up there back of the orange grove. Keeps a few colonies. I suppose I'd better go up there and take a look. Hey, you! Where's this fellow Zinthrop? No, oh, he's up where the extractor is, up there. Uh, hey, hey. This isn't a honeybee. These are wasps. Wasps? Who's responsible for this? Most likely Dr. Zinthrop, sir. I told you it was a crackpot. Zinthrop, huh? Zinthrop. Ah. Now look here, Zinthrop, what's all this nonsense about wasps? I'm so glad you dropped in, Mr. Barker. Mr. Barker, I'm on the verge of a great discovery. Discovery? What do you mean? Well, sir, I almost perfected a new method of extracting royal jelly from the queen wasp. According to my figures, you're better at extracting funds from the company. Now look here, Zinthrop, over a thousand dollars last month for miscellaneous. Yes, yes, I know, but Mr. Barker, let me just show you something. Just let me show you something. Already I've learned to slow the process of aging. Soon, I shall be able to reverse it entirely. What are you getting at, Zinthrop? Look, what do you see? I see a big dog and a little dog. Let's say an old dog and a young dog. All right, so what? Well, they're exactly the same age. You see, the little one, Greta, has been given regular injections of my compound from the queen wasp. Just like I told you, Mr. Barker. Yeah. Now look here, Zinthrop. I understand about science and progress and all that, but you were retained to extract queen bee royal jelly. Now, it's a health food, a, a cosmetic. It, it's not a, a miracle drug or an elixir of youth. That sort of thing is impossible. Oh, but Mr. Parker... Zinthrop, a... I, I'm sorry, Zinthrop, but I'm going to have to let you go. 
You just don't seem to be one of the team. Y you understand. Good luck. I'm sure you'll fit in somewhere. Fit in somewhere. Oh, no, no, don't worry, my friend. We shall find a home somehow, somewhere. Oh, but you sound impatient. I know, it's your babies, huh? They're hungry and uh, they must be fed. Uh, now, now, how would you like a nice, juicy little caterpillar, huh? Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Then, now you must eat them. Be strong because, well, we have a lot of work to do together. Yes, sir. A lot of work. As you can see, gentlemen, sales for the last fiscal quarter have dropped. Fourteen and one half percent. There has not been a corresponding drop in our competitor sales. I trust one of you gentlemen has a satisfactory explanation for this decline. Not one little suggestion, gentlemen. We'll start with you, Thompson. As public relations manager, no doubt you have some faint glimmering of what's happening to Stalin products. Well, Thompson? Well, you see, I, uh... I had no idea you were such an excellent public speaker, Thompson. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Darlin. I guess I'm not feeling very well this morning. I'm sorry you aren't. I think I can tell you why Stalin products are falling off so badly, Miss Darlin. We're listening, Lane. Where would you put the responsibility for this decline? On you, Miss Stalin. I imagine you have arguments to support that contention. We've all been looking at it for the past 20 minutes. The most convincing argument is right on that graph. May I show you? Thank you. Now, right here in April is when Stalin's sales started falling off. Very clever of you, Lane. Would you mind waiting until I finish, Miss Stalin? That's enough, Lane. Relax, Willis. My apologies for the interruption. Go on. Thank you. Now, as I said, sales began to fall in April. But the reason for the fall was back here in February. Now, the Stalin products have always been thought of as something of a, a modern miracle in the cosmetics trade. A firm built to a multi-million dollar a year business on the strength and appeal of, of one person, Janice Stalin. From the beginning right through until February of this year, only one woman's face was used to advertise those products. Your face, Miss Stalin. The public have come to accept you as a, as a symbol. Well, now, after 16 years, they see a different face. They, they don't trust it. They feel cheated. The simple fact is that Stalin Cosmetics should have Janice Stalin's picture advertising them. Well, that's about all I've got to say. And a darn good job of saying it, too. I agree. Uh, Lane makes a lot of sense on that score, Miss Stalin. I think I've had enough flattery for one morning, gentlemen. It was a very convincing argument, Lane. There's a Mr. Synthrop to see Miss Stalin. There's only one small factor you've overlooked. Not even Janice Stalin can. Remain a glamour girl forever. Miss Darlin. Yes, Mary. There's a Mr. Zinthrop in reception. He says he has an appointment. Thank you. Well, this has been a very informative get-together. That'll be all for now. Oh, Arthur. Oh, yes, Miss Darlin. I'd like to see you in my office, please. Sure, Miss Tom. Take it easy, hot shot. Something on your mind, Miss Stalin? You've done some 
work on royal jelly, haven't you? Oh, a little. Are there any real therapeutic values in it? Oh, I'd say so. Of course, uh, a lot depends on each individual's reaction to the stuff. What do you mean? It's just that no two people react in precisely the same way. One man's meat's another man's poison. Oh. But you think royal jelly can be beneficial in some cases. Queen Bee said a lot of stuff about it. I'll accept that as an affirmative answer. Supposing a more powerful form of royal jelly could be obtained. From the queen wasp, for example. I mean, well, do you suppose that might have some rejuvenating effect on a human being? I'd stay away from wasps if I were you, Miss Dolan. Socially, the queen wasp is on a level with a black widow spider. They're both carnivorous. They paralyze their victims and then take their time devouring them alive. They kill their mates in the same way, too. Strictly a one-sided romance. Well, I'm, I'm not exactly interested in, in the love life of the queen wasp. I want your opinion on the possibilities of using enzyme extracts from royal wasp jelly, commercially. Well, if you want an honest opinion, Miss Stalin... Of course I want an honest opinion. And my advice is forget about it. Thank you, Arthur. Any time, Miss Dolan. Have Mr. Zinthrop come in. Yes, Miss Darling. Uh, you can go in now, sir. Oh. Well, come. Janice Starlin Enterprises. Miss Darlin? Yes. How do you do? I'm afraid I won't be able to give you much time, Mr. Zinthra. But it is I who give you the time, Miss Darlin. Oh, yes. Plenty of time I give you. Ten, maybe fifteen years I give you. I want you to understand one thing very clearly, Mr. Zinthra. I expect absolute proof of what you claimed in your letter. Tangible proof, not words. <laughs> Such proof you shall get, madame, and more. But I think I'd better show you in the laboratory, yes? Terrible. Why don't you put them out of their misery? Madame, you ask for proof? Please be kind enough to look at proof you ask for. May I proceed? Thank you. minutes, madame, you shall see a miracle you shall not believe. Oh, no tricks. <laughs> you may look if you like. I have no tricks. Well, don't look at me. <laughs> I'm not changing. See, you do not believe one animal, so I bring two. I, uh, I show you again, yes? Yes, I must be sure. Yes, madam.
Well, Miss Darling, does my uh, secret have interest for you? Yes? What are your terms, Mr. Zentrum? First, I must have a laboratory equipped with everything I need for my research. If we're successful, well, I ask for a little percentage. But I must get full credit for my discovery. That is most important to me. I'll have Gordon draw up the contracts. Oh, contracts, contracts I do not need. You give me your word. Good enough for me. You amaze me. Frankly, when I received your letter, I thought you were just a, another eccentric. But there was always a chance you might not be. Then you walk in here and show me nothing short of a miracle. Two miracles. And you say that you'll accept my word that I won't cheat you. You won't. I know you're a good woman, even if you do not like other people to know it. However, uh, my formula may not be good for human beings. I have not tested yet. You will on me. Oh, no, 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 no. There might be danger. Those are my terms, Mr. Sintra. Janice Stalin will be your next guinea pig. Very well. Though it may take a little time to prepare sufficient extract, a week, maybe more. I'll make whatever arrangements you may need for your equipment. Thank you, madame. Now I see how you built all this. <laughs> I'm very close to losing it, Mr. Zinthrop. Maybe working together we can save Janice Darlin Enterprises. Maybe even make it bigger than ever before. Yes. Oh, yes. I'm sure the next three months we'll see a rise in Starlin sales that will surpass anything we've dared imagine. Mr. Zinthrop is working on the final stages of a development that will revolutionize the cosmetic industry. He's to have a free hand in his experiments and will be answerable to no one but myself. At the moment, I cannot divulge the nature of Mr. Zinthrop's experiments, but I can assure you it will bring worldwide recognition to Janice Darlin Enterprises. granddaddy of all confidence men to taking a guy like Starlin. Why doesn't somebody wise her up? Like you, for instance? Bill, what makes you think Synthrop really isn't on the level? After all, we don't even know what he's working on. It could be very legitimate. Oh, you're as bad as she is. Oh, women. <laughs> men. Every time you're stuck to an answer, you always come up with women. But you're not getting out of this one so easily. I'd like to know why you think Zinthrop really hasn't got something. Well, you can call it male intuition if you like. It's just that there's something about this whole business that doesn't smell right. The private laboratory, the secret experiments, Zinthrop himself. The only thing that's missing is a genie with a lamp. You better leave the intuition to me. I'll let you buy me dinner. Buy you dinner? What's happened to your sporting blood? I thought we were going to toss for the check. Oh, no. You won the last three times. All right, look, I'll make a deal with you. Dinner is on me if you promise to keep an eye on what goes on in there. Well, what do you want me to do? Read her mail and send you messages and keep your code? You could do worse. Oh, no, Mr. Cooper, not you, too. I've been trying to tell Bright Eyes here that I think Zinthrop is a phony and a confidence man. If I were sure of that, I wouldn't be worried. I think he's a lot more dangerous. A quack. Well, I don't follow you, Coop. Well, a confidence man would just be interested in your money. The only damage they can do is to your pocketbook. A quack can be fatal. <laughs> To him. I says, listen, Irving, I'm getting sick of this TV every night. I mean, you know, we can do the same thing in a nightclub. Well, almost. Mm -hmm. 
Good morning. Janice Starlin Enterprises. I got two words for you. Drop dead. Twice. Irving? Calls me to tell me Dr. Cyclops is on Channel 9 tonight. What crust. You've seen it twice already. Good morning. Is, uh, is Miss Darlin in her office now? Hmm? Oh, Miss Darlin's in conference. Would you like to speak to her secretary? Oh, no, no, no. Just say to Miss Darlin I should like to see her when she has time. Huh? Yes. Was there something else, Mr. Zentham? No, 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 no. Goodbye. What a character. A regular two-eyed Dr. Cyclops. Even the bow. Good morning. May I see Miss Zardling, please? <laughs> He's a real weirdy. Wonder what his game is. Who cares? You know, Morton thinks he's a crackpot. I heard him telling Cooper so. Old Bug Eyes really has the execs worried. About what? That's just it. They don't know. Oh. So anyway, back to Irving. Good morning, Miss Darling. Good morning. Good morning. I couldn't get away any sooner. Is it important? Miss Darling, do you remember the big cat I showed you last week? No. What about it? Well, I want you to look at him. Come. No. Quite a difference, yes? Say, Mark. Say, Gat. You're young again. Can you realize what that means? You're a kitten again. Your whole life to live over. How does it feel? I think perhaps you'll be able to find out for yourself, Miss Darling. Today, today will be your first injection. What is it, Gleason? I sent you a memo. Mr. Zinthrop has carte blanche to order anything he requires. It is no concern of yours, Gleason. Make out a check for the full amount. Sue? Mary? Can I talk to Mr. Lane a moment? Bill? Hey, listen. Gleason just got a bill for $2,300. Zinthrop. Enzyme extracts. Yes, yes, yes. We are making progress. There's great improvement in the tissue. Why is it taking so long? It's the third week. 
You forget, my dear, there's more to you than a little kitten, no? Besides, there's a difference in metabolism. Why not increase the dosage? Wouldn't that step up the process? Patience, my dear, patience. We must tread lightly with care, Your Honor, please. You know, I've been experimenting with the concentrated solution of the enzymes. Oh, a great deal more powerful than the solution I've been using in your injection. Oh? Yes. And I think, I think it will be better for lotions. As an emollient lotion, it'll make estrogenic creams and all such products old-fashioned. My dear, Stalin will be world famous, bringing you to millions. You're right, Synthrop. Going to be a few red faces in my advertising department. But I am right. Why, your own mirror will tell you that I am right. Why, you look at least five years younger than you looked three weeks ago. <laughs> I know. Talk to Bill a minute, Sue. Thanks. Bill, I think I've got it. Yeah, I'm a nervous wreck. At lunch. At lunch. You'll have to translate for me, Coop. I'm not very good at that technical stuff. Pseudo-technical. Uh, Mr. Zinthrop is a very capable confidence man from what I read in this letter. He claims he can stimulate the processes of rejuvenation through the use of enzymes extracted from wasps. Oh, for... <sighs> well, what are you two Sherlock's going to do about it? Right now, I don't know. Frankly, I'm getting tired of the whole business. That woman's so intent on holding back time, she's ready to fall for the first phony line she hears. Wasps. Bill! Face the facts, Mary. Janice Starland has built her whole life on youth and beauty. Now that she's losing them, she's scared to death. Right now, she's on cloud nine with that quack Zinthrop that I'd hate to be around when she comes back down to Earth. Well, maybe we can let her down easy. I think we owe her that much. Yeah. Well, what are we going to do? We can't just let Zinthrop build up her hopes and then knock the props out from under her. How can he do such a terrible thing? Poor Jan. There must be something we can do before it's too late. He's got a mighty convincing argument. Very impressive to the layman. Ten to one, he's got a record just as impressive. Well, there are ways to find out. The answer might be right here in our hands. Heads. I'm gonna keep this letter for a day or two. Wait a minute. Suppose she finds out it's gone. I'm the only one with access to that desk. She'll know I took it. Well, that's a chance you have to take, Mary. I think we can be pretty sure that Coop knows what he's doing, honey. Oh, come on, young lovers.
What is it, Maureen? It is you, Miss Tom. Of course it's me. Who did you think it was? Well, you, you look so different. Finish your nails. Maureen. Hmm? I think your phone is ringing. Oh. Uh, yes, Miss Starlin. Good morning. Janice Starlin Enterprises. Gentlemen, Janice Starlin Enterprises is about to start on the most widespread publicity campaign in the history of the cosmetic industry. Our slogan will be, Return to Youth with Janice Starlin. When Mr. Zinthrop arrives, there will be a press interview and all questions regarding the rejuvenation process will be referred to him. That'll be all for now, gentlemen. It's amazing. Why, it's wonderful. It's amazing. You look marvelous. I said that will be all for now, gentlemen. Good morning. Oh, not you, Mary. Wait a moment, please. Yes, Miss Starlin. Mary, isn't it wonderful? It's a miracle. A wonderful, incredible miracle. We were so worried about you. We really thought you were in danger. We even went to plotting how to, how to rescue you from Mr. Zinthrop. <laughs> it all seems so silly. It seems ridiculous. Oh, Mary. Mary, how old do I look? Tell me. How old? How old do I look? Tell me. Twenty-three, maybe twenty-two. Uh, tw <sighs> That's how old I was when I started Janice Starlin Enterprises. Do you realize what that means? I'm back where I started, eighteen years ago, with what it took eighteen years to accomplish. <sighs> it's like a dream. of quacks were treating people with monkey glands. It seemed to work for a while, and then the deterioration set in. That's awful. Do you think that will happen to Jan? I don't know. If I could just get inside of his lab and run a breakdown on what he's using.
Zentra. I want you to find him, Mr. Hellman. I don't care what it costs. Well, we'll find him, all right. Sooner or later, we find them all. Time is vital, Mr. Hellman. Every hour he's gone, it means more than you can possibly imagine. Well, you haven't given me very much to go on. No home address, no former employer, no phone. This is just like starting from scratch. <sighs> Mr. Zinthrop wasn't a, a conventional employee. He didn't go through regular personnel. Uh-huh. You say he came here about a month ago. Well, how did he come here, Miss Starlin? He just didn't walk in off the street, did he? The letter. Right here in my drawer. Maybe uh, one of the other drawers. So that's what she meant. What who meant? Starlin, the letter's been taken and you think you know who took it, is that right? My secretary, Miss Tennyson. You got her address handy? Her phone number. It might be better if I busted in on her cold. This way she'll have a chance to prepare a story. I know what I'm doing. All right. Mary, Janice Starlin. But before I went to lunch, I made a duplicate copy of Mr. Zendrup's letter. I was going to take that one to Bill and Mr. Cooper at first. But then I thought that the original would be better. Have you got the copy? Yes, it's in my desk. Get that copy, Miss Dennison. Uh-huh. 946 West 73rd Street, Manhattan. Yeah, that's right. Get right on it, Jerry, and check back with me as soon as you can. sure he's our boy. Uh-huh. 
Is he? Central emergency. Mm hmm Right. Well, it looks like we've got him. This is John Doe down at Central Emergency, auto accident. There's no identification on him, but he was wearing a lab smock and Phil Zinthrope's description. Mary, get my coat and Lane, get a cab downstairs. Is he badly hurt? Head injury, general contusions of the body. He's had a severe injury and there's definite brain damage. Just how much, we can't tell as yet. How long before you'll know? It's hard to say, Miss Starlin. Who's the best man for this kind of injury? Well, there are several top specialists. Get the best. I'll take full responsibility for the expenses. Yes, Miss Starlin. I don't know, Arthur. I think it best we wait. But it's been three days since the accident, Jan. And no sign of improvement. He's still in a coma. You heard what the doctor said. He may never regain consciousness. And even if he does, who knows how badly his brain has been damaged. Well, I'll give it another 48 hours. If he doesn't regain consciousness by then, well, you can take over the laboratory, Arthur. Uh, Janice. It's my decision. It's right in the middle of a good program. advertising campaign in the history of cosmetic advertising. Every newspaper and magazine in the country will be flooded with our new slogan, Return to Youth with Janice Starlin. Excuse me, uh, Miss Starlin. What is it, Thompson? Well, I think we should be a little conservative, Miss Starlin. Uh, cosmetics are one thing, medications another. We're liable to run into trouble. Yes. All advertising copy will be cleared through your office. Well, it's a touchy business, you know. 
Max is right, Miss Starlin. You don't have to second the motion, Nate. I want one thing understood very clearly now, gentlemen. Janice Starlin Enterprises is going to bring the most fantastically saleable product ever developed by modern cosmetics to the public. And I don't intend to be restricted by timidity on the part of my own staff. Is that clear? Are you all right, Miss Tarlin? It's just a, just a little headache, Mary. I'm fine. Can I get you something? I'm all right. I'm all right. Thank you. I have some aspirin in my purse. It's all right, Mary. Well, that'll be all for now, Jack. I sure hope they give the girls working at Starlin first crack at that new stuff. Imagine being 18 again. I guess if it can take 15 years off Starlin, it can take 10 off you. What do you mean, 10? Face it, honey. This is Maureen you're talking to. Yeah? Well, if I were you, I'd take a double dose. Then maybe Irving wouldn't watch television so much. So who says he looks at it? I can't imagine what else he does. Three guesses. Say, did Cooper come in yet? Mm-mm. Missed a board meeting this morning. I bet Starlin's having a fit. He should worry. Uh-oh. See you later. Bye, honey. Hi, pretty puss. You know where, um, Miss Starlin's office is? Sweet number one. <laughs> La dee da, the Duchess of Flatbush herself. How'd you like to have this phone wrapped around your ear, wise guy? It's more like it, sister. Sweet number one. Thank you. Miss Darling. Oh, what is it, Mary? Is there anything I can do? Yes. Is, uh, is Mr. Zinthrop's room ready? Uh-huh. The nurse is fixing the emergency equipment now, and the ambulance is due any minute. Well, be sure to let me know when it arrives. Oh, Mary, please, before you go, could you see if you could work that thing? Oh, sure. I've seen lots of these. Simple enough. That'll be all, Mary. Thank you. Right. We've had a room especially made over for you, Mr. Zinthrop. And Miss Warren has a room adjoining yours, so there'll be someone near you at all times. Thank you. Thank you. When you're feeling better, Mr. Zinthrop, sure. there are a few things I'd like to discuss with you. Good, good. We'll do everything we can to make you comfortable, Mr. Zinthrop. Yeah. I'm going to spend the nights here in my office. So if anything develops, I'll be on hand. Thank you. Thank you. Can we start? <laughs> only, only there's something. I must tell you something important. But, important, but... Uh, I cannot remember. Uh, uh, I'm sure it can wait. Uh, right now, the main thing is to get you back to health. Uh, Take good uh, care of you, Miss Warren. Yes, Miss Darling. Sure is funny about old Coop. He misses one day of work and you're ready to call missing persons. Well, he's a pretty conscientious guy, honey. If he felt sick or something, he'd have called in. Relax. We'll probably be in Brighton Chipper in the morning. Oh, interrupting something? Oh, we were just having a little coffee clutch, Miss Starlin. 
We were talking about Mr. Cooper. What about Mr. Cooper? Well, about his missing the meeting this morning. Nobody's been able to reach him all day. I wouldn't worry about that. Mr. Cooper's been here a long time. Probably feels he's entitled to take a day for himself now and then. That's what I've been trying to tell Mr. Lane. Oh, by the way, Miss Starlin, how is Mr. Zinthrop? Oh, fine. In a few days, we'll uh, start the layouts for the campaign. Oh, I'm ready when you are, boss. Look this over. Hey, Bill. Hmm? Don't go getting any ideas about the boss. Well, me? Don't be silly. I just wanted to know that I'm an eager member of the team. Still, she is looking a lot younger these days, isn't she? You think Zinthrop would give you any of those treatments? You know, break the watch or something? Guarantino this, too. Lie down now. Oh, Go to sleep. Such, such horrible sound. Like, like a nightmare. It's a bad dream. <gasps> Lie down. Just a dream. Uh, Tell Mr. Green that personnel is his responsibility. I have other things to think about than worrying whether the night watchman walked off the job. Well, that's just it, Miss Starlin. Mr. Green feels that the watchman never left the building. His lunch pail and his raincoat are still in the basement. I don't want to hear anything more about it, Mary. I right, Miss Starlin. We'll use these. Oh, fine. She swears she heard a scream from one of the other floors. Zinthra heard it too, but she convinced him he was having a bad dream. Oh, maybe they both were. It's not funny anymore, Mary. There's something going on in that building. And I'm going to find out what it is. How? Oh. Have a look around Cooper's lab, for one thing. After that, I... I don't know. Hold it steady. Bill, this is crazy. We can really get in trouble. I won't tire him, Miss Warren. But it is important. All right, Mr. Allen, I'll be in my room. Synthrop. Synthrop, you've got to help me. Something's happening. Something's happening to me. I can't control it. There is something I must remember, but I, I can't. Try to think. The wasp enzymes. The extracts you you were experimenting with before the accident. Try to think. <laughs> well, this is Zinthrop's notebook, Mary. Notes on his experiments with Jan. Well, how did Cooper get hold of it? I don't know. If only Cooper would show up. Mary, look. It's Mr. Cooper's pipe. Well, don't you get it? He's going to go out without his pants and leave that pipe behind. He's still somewhere in the building. I bet a year's salary on it. If he is, he... He's dead. And the night watchman. There's only enough left for one more injection. One more. You've got to make more, Zentra. Help me, Zentra. Please, please, my head. Oh, my head.
Is he asleep? I don't know. No, don't touch him. If anybody knows what's behind all this, it's him. Mr. Zinder. Bill. Look at and everything else is still in there. She wouldn't go out without her purse. Bill, let's get out of here. I don't like it. The cat... The cat... must warn her. Mr. Sinter. Who? Who are you? Well, there's nothing to be alarmed about, Mr. Sinter. I'm Bill Lane, and this is Miss Dennison, Miss Starlin's secretary. Miss Starlin? The cat? What about a cat? Must warn her. Injections. Must not take any more injections. Is Miss Darlin in danger? Terrible danger. I'm, I must... Take it easy, Mr. Uh, Zinthrop. You're still pretty weak. Mary, see if you can get Jan on the phone. All right. All right. There's no answer. Oh, Miss Darlin? Is that you, Mary? We're in the building. We're in Mr. Zentrop's room. Something's happened down here. Here, let in... me talk to her. Hello, Miss Starlin. This is Lane. Why are you and Mary still in the building? It's after 10. Oh, I must help. I'm Don't responsible. Don't let Mary. Uh, yeah. Oh, I must help. Uh, I must not I hold me I can't explain back. now, Miss Starlin. I must, I must go. Hang on to it. I must help. Uh, you must not hold me back. I'm... Don't worry, Mr. Zentrop. We won't let anything happen to Miss Starlin. Uh. What's going on down there? Stay in your office. I'll be right up. Keep an eye on Zinthrop, honey. I'm going upstairs. Oh, no. No, no. The insects. The insects. Oh, take it easy, Mr. Uh, Zinthrop. You do not understand. Miss Darling, she's in danger. I, I must warn. Look, I'll have to I stay must... here. You go for Jan. Uh, okay. Uh, when you get up there, call the police. You can't get outside on this phone. All right, all right. I'll hurry. Well, now the police. Sure, Mr. Zentrop. Now, you just relax and take it easy. Everything will be all right. We'll take care of those you whatever you You do not you understand. You do not understand that girl. You shouldn't have sent her upstairs. She's in danger. You must stop her before it is too late. Okay, as soon as the cops get here, we'll oh, take her. Oh, you fool, you fool. Miss Darling will kill her and tear her body to shreds. Miss Starlin, kill Mary? Miss Starlin is not a human being any longer. The enzymes have changed her. She will destroy the girl as a female wasp would destroy her enemies and then devour the remains. Then Bill found Mr. Zinthrop's notebook in Cooper's desk. Oh, now, there's no mistake. We've got to call the police now. Now, Mary, you're just getting a little excited. 
Now, who could possibly want to hurt Mr. Coop? I don't know. But it's not only Mr. Cooper. What if not? Now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.